Daily Mail says Martha's Vineyard declares a humanitarian crisis over influx of just 50 Venezuelan migrants. Republicans slam liberal islands pathetic reaction and ask, what are the thousands arriving in Texas every single day? I love this. Did you guys see Karine Jean-Pierre's response where she's like, it's, it's, a, it's a cruel and unusual thing to send people to Martha's Vineyard. And yeah, I'm terrible. like, calm down, man. Stop nice. bragging on Martha's Vineyard, dude. It's actually like, Ron DeSantis, I'm kind of jealous. Like, why does he get to give them a flight to Martha's Vineyard? What about me? Yeah, we're You fine. know? No, for real, like, I, I, I gotta be honest. He could have just randomly chosen 50 Floridians and been like, you're getting a vacation in Martha's Vineyard. Instead, the illegal immigrants are the ones who get this luxurious uh, vacation. Yeah, well, look at the immigrants that go to New York. They get well, a hotel in uh, in Times Square. So I mean, are they, they get, really at Times Square? Yeah, that's what I believe. Wow. The they they did originally. It was like six hundred dollars a night Luxury per room, hotel, and then they stopped that policy. But that was the policy in the first few uh, first few weeks. But yeah. but it's not a vacation. They're kicking them out. If if you see the the government officials from Martha's Vineyard, they're coming out. They're like, these people can't stay here. <laughs> they can't. They can't be here. There's fifty of them. They're calling for federal assistance right now. They're calling in emergency meetings. 50 people. How many mansions do they have over there? How many rooms does That's Barack great. Obama beachfront mansion that, that, by the way, somehow can't be affected by the rising tides he yeah, keeps true. warning everyone about? Yeah. How in the world? He has so many rooms. Let him in. Let him in the mansions. Why Why aren't they? Why are they, why are they being so selfish? Why are yeah, they Chris, being so, Chris, so disgustingly rude? Christina Peshaw tweeted, wow, this Martha Vineyard's Democrat doesn't seem very welcoming or progressive. Quote, we don't have housing for 50 immigrants. Uh, don't the Obamas have a 10 bedroom mansion there? <laughs> Minimum. That will fit half of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so the Obamas have eight rooms in their house. They have seven and a half bathrooms. They have 30 acres on a little piece Ooh. of Martha's Vineyard that's set to be of Martha's Vineyard that's said to be underwater in like five years, according to them. It's not me saying this. And I can't, you know, this lady who's talking about housing these people, Martha's Vineyard is really small. They're a very small population. It's likely that they don't have housing for 50 people right now, but at the same time, you know exactly what you voted for. I think this is brilliant. They, they, there's tons of properties on Martha's Vineyard, vineyard that are vacant. Yeah, there's tons. space, and there, and, there's and, space yeah. But there's, there's houses and they're not all big mansions. Some are like one bedroom, one bathroom, little co like little yeah, cottages. Yeah, yeah. So I get it; those are privately, uh, you know, privately owned. But hey, how about this? How about all the rich people? You know, you own a, a fifteen million dollar mansion. Why don't you, you guys, pull your resources together, send it to the government, so the government can do what you want them to do because you guys like helping migrants, right? So why don't you pull your money? The government can then buy some of these houses and start housing these migrants. What's wrong? Well, see, the troll in me loves that they're sending them there, but the pragmatic primetime ninety nine Alex sign, which oh. is I'm usually not like that. Oh. I don't want to send these immigrants all the way deep into America. Let's send them back to their home on a first class ticket. Well, so I, I you know? said this too, and people pointed out that the states don't have the international like authority to deport people. I'm um, sure. Yeah. So it's like international relations are, are negotiated at the federal level. So the state of Texas can't just send people. They, I think they could. But I think there's like an a, a international incident. Tim, thing we there. literally have an invasion on our border. It's not just people from South America. It's people from Russia, people from the Middle East that are coming through every day. And South, it's just from, it, from Africa. Yeah, from it's just, Africa. But it's a sex trafficking. It's a drug trafficking. I think they did. A, I think they took a, a woman in for a rape kit and she had semen samples in her from 22 different people. And I think the semen samples only live for like 48 hours or something. So and there's things called rape trees out there. I mean, it's disgusting where, you know, kids, they'll find underwear, they'll find tampons, they'll find all kinds of stuff that insinuated that there was some sort of sexual trauma that happened on that scene. So it's not okay when these these parents literally use well, their kids as collateral to, to send them with coyotes need, across the border. They need to send the National Guard down to the border and just shut it down. They need the regular army there, not just the National Guard. They, it, instead of having a base in every other country, we need to put bases on our border and try to protect our U.S. citizens. 108,000 drug overdose deaths this past year. We have a fentanyl crisis that is killing literal children left and right day after but day. But that's the CIA. That's the CIA well, is probably that's, bringing, bringing that one in. And you talk about the Iran-Contra, which we were trading with Nicaragua yep. guns and then we were bringing them in and Barry Seal was flying these drugs all cocaine over. Cocaine into the United States and making it crack cocaine and of course selling it to the per poor communities. Freeway Ricky Ross and yep. this is all news, done through me The, real freeway, the Ricky news Ross. would then mm -hmm. run stories where they would be like on the corner of 63rd and Cicero another super heroin death <laughs> and then the next day they'd be like 16 deaths last night after we ran that report. No joke. They would run reports telling people where it happened and then the addicts would rush there and be like I want to buy it and then the next day they'd be like even more dead.
Yeah, I, I, just to go back to this topic, 50, those are rookie numbers. Barack Obama, during COVID, had hundreds of people at his birthday party at Martha's Vineyard. That's, that's yeah. Bring right. them all. Yeah. Uh, have, have Obama host them. Obama's a, a big fan favorite, of course, bringing this people is... in here. Kamala Harris also had immigrants show up at her, her, uh, her doorstep today in Washington, D.C. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. As she was doing interviews saying that, that yeah, of course, the border is very secure. I think, I think uh, Abbott and uh, DeSantis should send more planes to Martha's Vineyard. And yes. it's mostly because it is a beautiful, nice, safe, wealthy place. The Hamptons. The fact that, yeah, in the Hamptons. Yeah. The fact that they're saying like, how dare you be so cruel? Like, so cruel. We sent these people to one of the wealthiest places in the country. Y'all can take care of them. They're gonna live better than they, they, than they would have lived anywhere else. A absolutely, and, and they're at the richest place in the world almost and and specifically when you send them to new york, to new york the mayor is even saying it's too dangerous for immigrants to be inside of new york city because of the rising violence so so why send them to new york martha's vineyard seems fine for me well and then have you guys seen the complaint from mexico city about the gentrification of all the oh, white people? Yes. 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 So isn't that funny how it works out like that you yeah. know they get a bunch of white people come oh get out of here they're making stuff rent more expensive and and they're the not toothpaste. speaking spanish they're yeah. speaking english <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah it's kind of funny. i got i gotta be honest like when these uh, uh, when these hipster liberal woke types discover that Mexico City actually wasn't all sepia toned and it was actually a fairly cool climate with delicious food and amazing yeah. people, all of a sudden they were like, "I'd rather be there." Yeah, I'd especially love with the remote, City. yeah, especially yeah. with the remote working too. That's what they said. Everybody, flocked. I've been there what, so what, many what, times. I love come, it down there. Real quick, how come like how come every media depiction of Mexico is sepia? Hmm. It's like. Yeah. It's like you've never been there. It's a secret. Well, why is it Texas is guy on a horse, a Mexican a sombrero? I mean, it's always the stereotype, you know? Yeah. I also learned that Mexican food is actually not Mexican food. When you go to a Mexican restaurant, it's uh, Tex-Mex. Oh, yeah. That yeah. makes sense. But I think, like, most people from Mexico realize that. They, they come up to here and they're like, what is this? Well, and, and you what's, know, a what's a burrito? And what we've seen here, you know, Thomas Sowell talked about this a lot, but, you know, liberals never have to actually live with the consequences of their actions. I mean, that's the reality. The far it's, left, they live all, hey, this doesn't, open border? There's not an open border. Well, all of a sudden, what you've seen Governor DeSantis do is put it right on, no, no, actually, you can you can, you can can deal with a little bit of what every border town, what our, every state is dealing with near the southern border and make them deal with the consequences. And boy, they don't like it. Dude, I just, I'm imagining DeSantis signing off on this. Mm -hmm. And they're like, <laughs> he's like, I got two planes, let's put 50, and they're like laughing. And they're just like, look, this is, it's insane to me that they're calling it cruel to the immigrants. Yeah. I don't think anyone's buying it. That's I think right, that's you're gonna right. have yeah. some working class family, you know, making 50K a year trying to support their kids. And they're like, you think being sent to Martha's Vineyard is cruel? Yep. Tim, we won't let Novak Djokovic come in right. and defend his title, <laughs> yep. literally, because he will not get a vaccine that is the most safe and effective thing ever. I have six Fauci ouchies. Thank you for creating it. I'll miss you, Dr. Fauci. But if you are an illegal immigrant, we'll let you come in. We'll give you a cell phone. And if you're young enough, we'll give you a social security number. And we'll give you a first class ticket to Martha's Vineyard to go to Barack Obama's birthday party. What do you, what do you, <laughs> what do you think would happen if, if they sent like 300 people? I mean, it'd be a, it's, it, they're already tears. declaring a humanitarian crisis. It'd be apocalyptic. Yeah. It, it, but, but maybe that's the only way to get the attention of these uppity, wealthy liberal types. I mean, Obama lives there. Maybe the only way to make them finally do something is to be like, we're going to put it in your lap. Yes. They have to suffer the consequences yep. of, the, of the policies that they are pushing. And they have been allowed to get away with it for far too long, where it's other Americans that suffer the consequences. And they have built themselves an ivory tower far from it. And it's time for that to stop. This is something Thomas Sowell talks about. He talks about it is dangerous to put people in charge who pay no consequences when things go wrong. This is exactly what they're seeing. This is why I said this is brilliant. I, I <laughs> kind of agree with Alex. Hold on. Let's look at this. No, no. Continue. Continue. I was going to say, I, I, I agree with Alex that I don't feel like we should be pushing them into the country. But at the same time, right. if you don't hold politicians accountable, they'll just keep doing what they're doing. Look at this. Just put us in this situation. Let me, let what is this? this? They deserve better than being left on the streets of D.C. <laughs> or being left in Martha's Vineyard. They deserve deserve a lot better than that. <laughs> Man. They That's yeah, leave I them on the streets in Texas yeah. or New York okay, City. Yeah. Right? Just not in our homes. Yeah, right. Just exactly. please get them out of here. It's, I mean, but, this is but crazy. isn't it amazing? I said that just like D.C. or Martha's Vineyard. Yep. She, she didn't say same. Texas. She didn't say El Paso. Yep. She didn't yep. say New York City. Yes, it's just where we are. Yeah, just get them away from oh, us. Oh, I despise yeah. these. These people are just so scummy and evil. Man, they vote for things 
that won't because they won't face the consequences like you were saying they live in big cities and they vote to take away the guns from a dude who lives in bear country yep. they're like you shouldn't be able to have more than 10 rounds in your weapon it's like what if I'm attacked by a bear yep. I don't care yeah. screw you yeah. or pigs Thir yeah. 30 to 30, the, the, the meme was 30 to 50 feral hogs and the left went nuts laughing being like that doesn't happen and yeah. then all these people in the country were like dude feral hogs are extremely dangerous and we go on hog shoots because they destroy your property and they can kill kids yeah. We can take away your and they do kill your, kids. Yeah, we can take yeah. away your guns because we've got a dozen armed That's security right. guards that follow us around us, you know, encircle us wherever we go. But you know what? You guys don't need guns. I mean, it's just the hypocrisy is never ending. But, man. Yeah. Well, and I want to make this point too, and I think it was Thomas Jefferson that said this. But this is the problem with democracy: is that it's two wolves and a sheep deciding what's yes. for dinner. So you know what I mean? Nothing's ever going to be fair. And if you get the populace on your side, we actually don't even have a populist movement. They always say, "Oh, you know, the ultra maggot is more of the populist movement." My point being is that we are not well we're not represented correctly by the people in power and i think that's why we're subjugated to so much uh, strife and that's where we fight with each other instead of actually fixing look the at problems. this one this one uh, from timcast.com governor jb pritzker orders emergency declaration following arrival of illegal immigrants from texas mayor Lori lightfoot and texas governor greg abbott have been exchanging barbed comments for the last month <laughs> i love how they sit back and just gloat voting for these policies as Texas, Arizona, and other southern border states, New Mexico, suffer. The moment these states say, y'all can share in the bounty for which you have sown, they go, oh, emergency. Oh, how could you do this? You're so evil. They're claiming emergencies in Illinois, in New York, Martha's Vineyard, D.C. It's pathetic. But you know what? Maybe this is the only way, the only way to make a change, the only way to get these people to stop doing it. They don't think that these other states are part of the U.S. And I think this is exactly in line with how Biden was giving that speech about how all these mega, mega horrible people are. They're like not part of our, our democracy. The left their democracy. uses their positions in power to punish conservatives and those against them in the country. I mean, that, that is they take it and it is it is a game of how do we leverage this to punish those that are against us and this is what this is what you see hey as long as it's in texas as long as it's in oklahoma as long as it's in these red states great as soon as it gets in our states it is a state of emergency yes exactly those consequences that we've ignored for decades i, I, I say keep it up keep it up keep it up abbott desantis desantis should send more planes out 100 percent. because the, the other thing too is aside from the politics of it if you're getting, if Florida and Texas are being overwhelmed and they can't properly care for these people, they need to send them somewhere. Why Why not just send them to where these people voted for it? And I, I, they're sanctuary cities too. You know, DC is a sanctuary city, California right. is a sanctuary state. Right. But here, here's what I want to point out. You know, they're secretly happy about this. When the census comes around, I think we're like, what, eight years out or something like that. This is going to give them more congressional seats. Tim, they say voter ID is racist, yet they wanted you to have a freaking vaccine mandate to buy a hot dog at 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's all you need to know. Of course, that's Chris, why they need this. Char uh, Charlie Chris in uh, Florida <laughs> says that there should be vax mandates again. Of course, they love that. They love a vaccine. And that's not racist. Having to show an ID and a vaccine card to eat spaghetti at Olive Garden, <laughs> that's not racist. But having to show an ID to vote an election, that is I would love treat. it if felt like the policy was specifically about hot dogs at 7-Eleven. It was just like, everything else is fine, but <laughs> hot we, dog. Yeah. We got, well, we don't know what's in them and they're probably dirty. Yeah, so. that's fair. Because we do have liability here at 7-Eleven, yeah, so we'd prefer if you were uh, vaccinated for it. No, but, but that it just kind of shows you the hypocrisy of this. And I think you're exactly right that there is some sort of uh, ulterior motives with the border being. No, I think open. I think they're just scumbags. I, I think they just sit. Well, so, well did look, you look, not look. see? Did you not see the messaging they asked one of the immigrants, and the immigrants thought that the border's open. They, yeah. They're under the impression that it is. Here's here's an example. They say we got to go green, and you go, okay, nuclear power is very very you know uh, there's a lot of energy density in, in nuclear, and they go, oh, nuclear is bad, and you're like, okay, well, oh, come on, like you're you're telling me there's no solution, and that we got to stop what we're doing. That makes no sense. The policy from these people that we got to get off fossil fuels, but that we can't use green technology like nuclear. Then they want, they say, oh, we'll do, we'll do solar and wind, even though we don't have the batteries for it. Huh. They're not offering you solutions. They're offering you destruction. They're offering you problems. Yeah, but Tim, this is just, a, that is just a, a perfect example of what we're going through. It's called the Great Reset. And I know there's different iterations of the Great Reset, but once they take us off the fossil fuels and we're on a battery, then they can control every micro microtransaction that you go through, whether starting your car, or turning on your cell phone. So that's why they want us so dependent on a grid so we have no independence whatsoever. Action, man. 
uh, super chat. He said, "Let's send feral hogs to Dem strongholds." Too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, did you see in Pennsylvania or somewhere where there's a limit to the clips? A guy almost got killed by a hog. Yeah, because he didn't have enough what, bullets. Was this it, it, Italy? Somewhere, yeah, or wherever that yeah, was. Yeah, it was yeah. A, the viral video out of Italy where a hog charges a guy and he's only allowed three rounds, mm -hmm. and they don't stop the hog. Yeah, right. it almost gets in, in yeah. Poland recently. There was a child that died because of hogs. Oh. You know, they attacked him and killed him. It was a big story everywhere. Dude, so people don't get pigs are brutal. Like I went yeah. to uh, I went to a county fair recently, Sharp tusks. and they have a whole bunch of big fat pigs laying around, and people were like, "Oh, the pigs will kill you. They'll eat you." Oh yeah, yeah. you got to go in there and you got to like whack them to get them away from you and stuff. But yeah, you fall lecture. down, they'll just be like, "Food, yeah." Yeah, they can digest both now imagine, and yeah, now imagine feral, you know, feral hogs running around. Before Dangerous. we move on from the immigration thing, and then I'll be quiet for a little while. Do you guys remember that Joe effing Biden sent seventy seven zero planes to Tallahassee, Florida, in the dead of night, full of illegal immigrants? And now they're talking about DeSantis human trafficking. Oh, Bro, Biden was trafficking kids. Yes, literally. In, into like Tennessee, into uh, Westchester, New York. Florida. Yeah. And Florida. Yeah. The Biden mission, and they're probably still doing it. I'm sure they are. So you look, you can't trust the media, man. You know, we're, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to put a, sh I was thinking about this earlier and I was just thinking about how like the, the left has become just this cult of do whatever you're told. And then I thought it was funny because that old, you know, Pink Floyd thing, mother, should I trust the government? Like it used to be mainstream acceptable to be like, you shouldn't. And so then I was like, I have an idea. We're making a shirt. And it's, uh, I probably shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it anyway because I, I think it's funny. And it says, Mother, should I trust? It's a little girl asking her mom, Mother, should I trust the government? And they're outside at 7 Eleven. And she says, Yes. And the 7 Eleven guy's injecting her in the arm with the vaccine. I'm like, that, that, that pretty much sums up where we're at, in my opinion. Yeah, I love the vaccine. Oh, uh, speaking of orphanages, we didn't mention uh, Laura Silsby getting caught with 20 Haitian. Uh, orphans at the border and uh, Hillary Clinton bailing her oh, out. Yeah, what are you talking about? That What's her name? Laura Silsby. Laura that was a big thing. You know, and still, uh, a lot, lot of... No, that's fake news. You guys, that's debunked. That's uh, that, that's totally totally debunked. Uh, NPR says, Laura Silsby, Haitian orphans would be rescuer, serial rule breaker. She's a rescuer. See, what do you, what do you, what, yeah, what do you she, mean? Yeah, she's rescuing those children she's rescuing to bring to children. Hillary. Good for her, yeah. What, what is it? She was Where, where does it say she was arrested? Lauren Silsby... I think she was arrested at the Haitian border. And I think uh, Hillary Clinton, they raised like $280 million for Haiti. And I think they built like 11 houses or something like that. Barely that. Yeah. yeah. The whole Clinton Global Initiative was a money laundering scam operation that, of course, was just no, taking this, money this from is, big governments, is, including kinda, Ukraine. Ukraine donated a, a bunch just, of money to the Clinton it's, Global it's, Initiative. It's just a big mistake. Uh, Idaho Press, NewsGuard certified, says Laura Silsby convicted in Haiti, but free to go. It must be just one big misunderstanding. And didn't Hillary Clinton yeah. give the mining rights to one of their relatives to mine in Haiti? Yeah, in exchange for for all the benefits that they got there. I interviewed a, a, a Haitian that, that gave me a very passionate speech about the destruction that the Clintons brought to that country that has just been robbed and pillaged by the American ruling class. And uh, I think you can still find it on YouTube. It, maybe if you're lucky, we are changed Haiti, but, but uh, absolutely mind boggling how much politicians have robbed that country, particularly the Clintons, and just took everything away from it. Uh, just to add up to the other points that we were talking about before, there's still students that have to go through vax mandates here in the united states oh, yeah. that still have to get their boosters uh which is absolutely absurd in wow. my opinion did you hear, did you guys know about the story the uh, the un linked cholera outbreak was like a huge thing wow. where I, I don't remember the full details but i remember there was like a big expose about it where basically something happened the un ended up contaminating a bunch of water or something like that they say it was cholera free until october 2010 when infected sewage from U united nations peacekeepers sent to the caribbean nation after a devastating earthquake contaminated a river Wow. Since then, about 10,000 Haitians have died of the disease, which can cause profuse diarrhea and fluid loss that can kill with hours. More than 800,000 fell ill. Yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff that, uh, you know. If you could die from diarrhea, I'd be dead 800 times. <laughs> you can. You actually maybe can. you wow. should call a doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, water. maybe I'm a ghost. Ooh. That's how we ended up here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder about stuff like the Silsby stuff, you know, because in all seriousness, she was, like the story said, she was convicted. And... Um, like what? What's going on? Who, like what are they doing? What are they doing, Luke? How far do you want to go down the yeah, rabbit hole? Yeah, I mean, like, what, what, what can I say here? Like we, I could go, but like I don't know if you want me to go now. Like to well, be real. Well, and, and listen, and uh, before we get too conspiratorial, this will be on the members only segment. But all you got to do is look at R.I.P. Uh, Lizzie McBeth, uh, the Queen, and one of her best friends is a guy named Jimmy Seville, and Jimmy oh, Seville is one of the most yeah. legendary evil uh, predators there ever was. And you look at her son, Prince Andrew. But but, mm. but but my point being is with Jimmy Seville is that he would supposedly take them on a boat, and we got to say this, we got to only say some stuff. On YouTube and do the most heinous things to children. So why would a evil person want to have access to a children? 
Well, I mean, it's either you're trying to be a cool tutor or mentor or mentee relationship, or you want to probably violently do something you, you, bad. You guys it. ever see that uh, South Park episode about the Super Adventure Club? Mm-mm. Is that what it, I think that's what it was called? Someone, can you, someone, Google that. Look that up. Super was, Adventure Club. Something like that, or the Explorers Club. I th- it's a South Park episode, and basically, you think they're like adventurers, but they're actually just a, a, a network of pedos that go and rape kids. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, kind of what happened with the Boy Scouts with a lot of this stuff. I mean, well, that was a South Park episode, by the way. That's, that's just, you know, fiction. Fiction <laughs> yeah. is, is well, all it is. Well, there's a saying nobody likes other kids except for their own. So if you're like a person that w- wants to be around kids all day, where they're like, you know, mentoring them, I almost kind of give a break to coaches because that's a little different. They want to be like involved in the sports, but I feel like adults that want to be no, with other people's no, kids no, no, is no, a little on. weird all the like, time. But Ryan knows better than no, me. He's no, no, a teacher. No. This, he is, knows. This, is, this is what I, I can't stand. Like, you don't want to stretch it too far. Though. No, I, I okay. can't stand that narrative. That's a little because too that's, vague. That, that's part of this, this, a similar narrative like, where it's like, yeah. there was a story of a firefighter who was sitting on a plane at a window seat and a little girl was sat next to him and the stewardess came up and said, you have to move. And he was like, what? Excuse me, why? And they were like, because you can't sit next to this little girl. And he was like, why? What? And they forced him to move. And there's a bunch of stories like that. This idea that simply because you're an adult who wants to mentor kids automatically makes you an evil person. Yes, yeah, like, I don't think that. Yeah. No, I just think it's dangerous to be like, people shouldn't want to be around kids. No, we should keep the creepos and the, and the pedos away from kids. And people should actually be good stewards to you know the future generations. No, and I agree. I think we need more mentor-mentee relationships. But I'm just saying pedophiles or predators figure out ways in order to ingratiate themselves with kids so they use gymnastics or they use whatever they can to get access to kids that's because they're predators and so that you know it it was when i was a teacher and a coach i would have kids go hey you know they'd say something about being a friend i'm like i'm not your friend i'm your teacher like i i don't i don't have kid friends you know like i have adult friends but i don't want a 17 year old friend right like i'm your teacher i'm your coach there's a relationship here but that's what this relationship looks like and that's where, and I'm, I'm t- you know, it's terrible, all the different molestation issues that we have in schools. But to your point, if you are a sexual predator, mm-hmm. you want to go work at a school. I mean, you're going to yeah. go to where the kids or are. Disney. Or Disney. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that, yes. that, that just happened recently again, right? Yes. Di- you know, and Disney out. talks about that. Yeah. They, their security is, is they understand that they have got to be one of the top places in the world for where a pedophile would go. And, and it's... You have to protect kids, and you have to know that again. Dude, if you are, t- look at this. Oh, I'm, I'm and, sorry, and this man. Is one of hold many. on, hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, so interrupt. Many. But this was ten hours ago. Oh my gosh. Disney and Publix employees, among those accused of wanting to abuse and groom children. Oh. Yeah. So this this guy is, is this the one where the cop is like, it wouldn't be a sting without Disney, and then he mentions like another Disney employee was cut. Look, I don't fault Disney for this. I think they're kind of bad for a lot of other reasons. Mm-hmm. I don't blame them. It's that these these creeps, these pedos, these predators know kids. These are kid places, mm-hmm. and that's why they seek out these jobs. Also, schools, and that's why it's crazy that when we're like, hey, we got to be careful. There's a bunch of these creepy stories. We, we had a story the other day about a teacher who got arrested for banging a high school student. Mm-hmm. We need to be vigilant because the predators are trying to get into these schools. Sure. But then you get banned from Twitter for bringing it up. And that's right. And that's where when you talk about these conversations about sexually inappropriate material with kids, that's exactly what you have to make sure isn't going on in the classroom. Because look how quickly that turns into grooming. Look how quickly that turns into molestation and putting kids in these positions. And so that's where we have to hold the line on this. Yeah. I mean, it is it's, it is protection of kids. Yeah, but you have to understand, this is not the first time that this happened with, with Disney. There, there was a number of, of Disney stings that you could look up and you could see a plethora of news reports. There's also the Franklin cover-up. There's also Larry Nassar. There's also Epstein, Edward Heath. Jimmy Seville, I think, is the biggest one when it comes to people being in the industry of, of allegedly being in children's entertainment and using that along with the connections with the royal family to do just the most god-awful things. And we're talking about beyond hurting children. This guy w- was believing in some like satanic entities, was doing things to dead bodies that I can't even describe here. He was stuff out of the morgue. He, yeah, yeah, I can't. I, family-friendly show here, so I'm not going to get into it. But but we have to understand that the FBI, when it came to Larry Nazar and Epstein, helped and aided and abetted this operation all, all, all the way. So when you look at the FBI now targeting school parents who are showing up at, at, at the yeah. teacher school boards who are concerned about this type of activity, it really makes you wonder what really deep down is happening here. And, and, when the FBI is targeting parents in Virginia, as as it was the FBI targeting yeah. them, right? Domestic yeah. terrorists. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and you know, Alex was talking about this earlier about how coordinated is it. I mean, you look at the levels of coordination where you literally have a national teachers union 
that comes in and, and asks, and the, and the National School Board Association asks for the FBI to investigate parents at school board meetings. And you look at this and you go, okay, if we're about protecting kids and doing what's best for kids, there's no one's gonna protect their kid more than their mom and dad. And the further that we continue to box them out, the less they can protect, be a part of what their what, what's going on with their kids. But the other part of it is, it's it is the complete destruction of the family unit. We want, I mean, I, as, again, as a teacher, one of the things we always lament it. We wanted more parents involved. We want more parents at parent teacher conference. We want more parents talking to you about their kids because it means that they're going to get that full support. They're going to be supported in everything that's going on, not only at school but at home. But yet, the left wants that separation and you've got extremists and you have folks that are actually doing it intentionally to get in with kids and for grooming purposes well even on blm's uh you know whatever mission statement it said the denuclearization yeah, that's right. That's right. of the breakdown of the family unit yeah, but explain to me this so when they when you do the standardized test now they say like a sixth grader now is at like a first grade level or something and they're blaming that on the pandemic which i'm sure that had a big part of it but are kids just getting dumber i mean why are they doing so bad on the standardized test compared to not that long ago yeah you know i I, the entire system has been built in a way that doesn't reward exceptionalism and doesn't reward student outcomes, whether that's rewarding teachers or whether that's getting kids more aligned to the education that best fits their needs. And so what happens is, again, the National Teachers Union fought to shut down schools. And masks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and fought to put to mandate masks, fought for all this nonsense. And then we have it and it plays out. And then you see the disruption and a school system, I mean, our education system was already not Bad. performing well. And then you have the disruption, which is just further indicative of the entire problem. The entire problem is you have associations that are far left that their concern is not kids. It is their adult membership. So guess what? Every time we can fight to close down schools, they close down schools. Mm -hmm. The National Teachers Union, every time they have a reason to shut down a school, a protest. I mean, I've always, think about a teacher blocking kids from going to school. Mm. And that was what you saw during the pandemic, but it's indicative of the policies they advocate for all the time are not pro-student, they're pro their associate, and they're not even pro-teacher really, it's pro their association, their membership, to grow them and leverage them. And so the outcomes that you've seen are because of intentionally, and they're, and, but, I'm sorry, you got me on a rant, right? Yeah, you no you teed me up. Yeah. But the other thing is their entire worldview is anathema to student performance. If you believe that everybody is a victim, okay? If you believe that because of your victim status, because America is an evil racist country, misogynist, I mean, pick every, you know, every box that they that they try to check, and you tell kids that from when they're three years old to when they're 18, you've built in every excuse to not be successful not be successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a reason why, you know, again, my other hat was a coach. As a coach, you don't come in and go, hey, we're going to get whooped because that team, you know, hey, they got more money than us. Their gym's nicer than us. It doesn't matter. You see athletes come out of poverty all the time and just kick people's butts because they haven't been told from when they're three, hey, you know, actually, you know, we live in a, in a, in a bad part of town, so you're never going to be a good athlete. That's not at all what they're told. But we do it in academics because the left has been able to take it over. So they emphasize victimization, excuse making, and kids respond to that. They rise to the level of expectations you put on them. And if you tell them they're victims, cool, I've got to get out of jail card for the rest of my life because I'm a victim. But they'll, they'll be really good at dancing when they're older because, you know, <laughs> that's one thing they're doing. TikTok. And, and I don't want to, you know, bogart the conversation. I don't bogart the blunt. I don't want to bogart the show. But uh, Norm MacDonald has a great joke where he talks about how teachers' jobs are pretty easy because both of his parents were teachers and how, uh, I know these are going to get mad because you're a teacher, but basically it's like, you know, it's like low stakes and that uh, they get all these holidays. And I think that's kind of where it is. That maybe people become teachers because they know it's easy. You know, I'm not saying that it's easy to teach i think it's hard to teach but it's just kind of like this like a teacher can almost be an alcoholic like there's no high stakes for them to actually teach their kids the curriculum they're just kind of showing up and getting a lot of vacation. yeah they're they're the ones issuing the grades they can say whatever they want yeah they can be like everybody was good Next. And, and the Basically. lockdowns and the mask policies that they caused had tremendous negative effects not only on intelligence not only on cognitive function but also obesity there are many studies out right now showing how these deliberate lockdowns these deliberate maskings when they weren't even backed by science have had horrible tremendous negative effects on the development on children or even L L L what's her name Lee or Lena Wen on, on CNN She's my came Canadian. out publicly and said um, I, I should have never told my child to wear masks because now he has developmental problems because wow. of that. I, and I'm living proof I've gained 45 pounds the YMCA kicked me out for not wearing a mask let me back in YMCA if you're watching this yes they didn't on Preston Road in Dallas Texas please let me back in
but I, don't, when, I don't think you're 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 I lost okay. I gained the weight because of them. It's all their Fair fault. It's nothing to do with those milkshakes. <laughs> from in and out. You're innocent. Yeah. The milkshakes drink themselves. It's true. You're, you're a big booty. Uh, I'm a big booty white guy. conspiracy theorist. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, that's where we're at. I, yeah, I can blame the pandemic for everything. Uh, uh, but we'll do it back to the teachers. I'm just saying. I think the like the idea of like uh, teachers actually caring about their students. They don't care about that. They care more about their social issues and like teaching these kids that you know white guilt and uh, yada yada yada. Yeah. You know? we're, we're not championing excellence and outcomes. We're not saying that the goal of educate these groups are not saying the goal of education is to get a kid in a position to get a job that lines up with their talent, with their skill set, so that they can get the most out of their life. That's not listen to the arguments. We don't feel safe, so we don't want schools to open. Well, we've got all the science that says uh, that it is safe. Well, no, well, we still don't feel safe. Well, if you don't give us X, X Y, or Z, we're going to close down the school. So, I mean, frankly, what are you doing? You're, the kids are ho- held hostage in this in this agreement here with the National Teachers Union. So, we're not going to let your kids get an education till you give our association what we want. I mean, you just see how how we flip the whole thing on its head. And, and if the argument is what's best for kids and what puts them in the best spot to be successful. Frankly, you want to have good teachers. Mm. You want to have folks in the classroom that are exceptional, that are ambitious, that are talented, that are that, that work well in that environment, that solve complex problems. But you know what? When you create a system that says, actually, we don't care. Actually, what we want to do is make sure our association's happy. What you're doing is just setting a baseline for saying, we're just going to make this as easy as possible rather than, hey, we want to find exceptionalism. I want to make sure that people are being successful because that means that the kids will be better off. I see some selfies going on. Yeah, just a little bit. Keep going. Don't distract you. Yeah, we're talk- go back to teaching the kids exceptionalism while I'm trying to Instagram. I'm yeah, trying to get that Tim Pool clout. Don't, don't, don't that's bring right. that. There you go. Absolutely. But completely overhauling the system. I'm a big fan of the micro schools. Uh, we, had one out, we have one out here that I've... I've, I've contributed to the way they do it is your your grade level is based on where you are so if you complete the entire math book then you're done with math yeah, yeah can we even talk about that for a second think about how, how think about how silly this is you're in you're in seventh grade well what if you get through with all the seventh grade material where well, you're in seventh grade yeah okay well, what if you're bad at math ridiculous. when good at english mm-hmm. 45 minutes in math 45 minutes in english well i struggle yeah. with english 45 minutes in English. I mean, the the way we've set up the entire system is to not be flexible, to not be agile. And uh, are you familiar with like the maker spaces, micro schools, where they give kids like a maker space yeah. and say, oh, hey, wow. yeah, so oh, cool. it's awesome. And they go, Here, here's the deal. You've got to create a project that does A, B, or C. Boom, you got three weeks to do it. Wow. And they, and they cool. give them the materials and go, hey, here you go. And, and it's, a, it's based on the project. And this is where, again, the overstandardization of saying, hey, you've got to get 36 credits and you got to get a physics credit and you got to do these 45 things every week to do. no 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 what do we want in, what do we want what's the end game work with the end game in mind and what yeah. do you want for kids and those maker spaces have been just blowing up you, you, you compare that to children learning about pronouns it, it's a no it's a no-brainer mm. the, there's another <laughs> <Right>. article <Yeah. laughs> from uh, NBC News in 2004 that really kind of is, is very eye-opening it kind of hits on what we're talking about and it's titled study one in ten students encounter sex abuse in school mm. uh, this is NBC News according to research from the Department of Education after quote exhaustive review of research and those numbers are absolutely crazy in 2004 I could only imagine what's possibly even happening right now Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.